Hey, hey, welcome back to the channel. It's awesome that you're tuning in. In today's video, we're going to take a close look at one of those like companies I did review a couple of times before. So what happened? Why is this so... Never rise. So this is the AMD Ryzen 9 6009 of HX from B-Link. Yeah, comes with 32 gigabyte of memory and 500 gigabyte of storage. But let's see, what are we getting today? <laughs> So B-Link is a company I've been reviewing quite a long time now with a couple of different items. And it is sometimes a hit or miss when it comes to the specs. But this 6908, did I say it correctly? Yeah, 6900. 6, uh, it's absolutely a very powerful, an older but powerful, let's uh, say, CPU, GPU, or a chip. Because you can do a lot of cool things. <laughs> I find that always kind of cool. Hello. Next up, we're having the Deluxe Manual, no toilet paper stuff over here, with some explanation how you need to connect it, and some other information about the mini PC itself. Oh, crap. In the package itself, we're going to have a lot of cool things, including the power supply, an HDMI cable. The power supply is your typical power supply of B-Link, but what I noticed with some other models, we have these magnetic, let's say special connections, we don't have this with this particular model, maybe because this is more like a mid-range and not the high-end stuff that they also try to sell online. So in here we're finding the old famous B-Link and the overall construction of these, let's say, mini PCs are quite nice. I'm always very, let's say, pleased about it. So this is a combination of most of the time plastic, where let's say the premiums come with metal cases or metal bodies. At the front we're having some connections and the same goes as the back, but I really see something I don't really like. I'll explain what I mean with that later. The power supply, let's take a close look at this. So this is a 19 volt power supply with just a normal barrel jack connection. So that's it. Nothing much. Nothing more and yeah. The aesthetics and the overall design is quite nice of the SHR B-Link. The overall design and aesthetics are absolutely amazing, but the thing I don't really find very interesting and also kind of a let's say bummer is that the front connections. Yep, we have an on and off switch, headphone jack and USB-C, but only one USB port 3 to though. But when you're looking at the back, oh boy, the connection is also there. We're only having two USB ports, so I'm to make a total three. So where it's going to be one 3 to though and only one 2 to do RG45 for connection, display port, HDMI port, another USB-C, and then we're having the other uh, headphone jack out, and we have an input for the power supply. So that's actually one negative point to begin with. We need more USB connections. For this review, I'm going to use a keyboard controller and yeah, and a mouse. But the main problem is when you're having three ports, so I'm going to be using a USB hub. Of course, we can use the USB to see with a converter and all kinds of shenanigans, but okay, that's more like a personal thing. So at the bottom part, we're finding very nice rubber, like giving this thing a good stable position on your table. I'm just using a special mat over here for reviewing, but if you're going to put it on the table, you don't have any like, noise coming from the mini PC to your table itself. Okay, so it's a wicked nerdy time, and let's take a close look at specifications. So this thing comes with the AMD Ryzen 9 6900HX, has a max TDP of 45 watts. It's also called a code name Rembrandt. Socket FP7, but the overall specification thing is absolutely not bad at all, with the 8 core and 60 threads. Main board itself, manufactured by AZW, model number HAR. Okay, so the bus specs are PC Express 4 Dodo. Memory in total, we're having 32 GB DDR5. That's been divided over two slots. And then, of course, we're having the graphics. That's just the onboard AMD Ryzen graphics. Okay, when you're looking into, let's say, so Windows gaming, we can do a lot of cool things here. And that is the reason why I'm kind of a fan of this chipset itself, where this thing is getting older it still has a lot of potential. So this is just an old game and it's not pushing this device to this limit. So Street of Age 4 is one of my favorite games to play. And also a lot of different indie games can be played on this machine without any problem whatsoever. This is absolutely just a game that runs perfectly on all settings high. All right, so another thing I just wanted to check out. Let's see how it will run when it comes to Super Street Fighter 4. Every setting set to the highest setting, even anti-aliasing and all the craziness have been implemented. So let's have some fun and let's see how many FPS we're getting. Are we going to have everything set to this older game to the highest settings? Violence is who I am. I shall grind beneath my heel. All that is. Are you ready? Fight! Well, 
We're moving on to the Red Roger and two dimensional games where you don't really expect that this is going to be needing a lot of power. But that is something I was quite surprised by that this beautiful game needs a very powerful mini PC. And this 6900 HK can barely keep up when looking at the FPS, hitting 60 FPS, everything has been set to the highest settings 1080p. But it does run perfect, or it runs like when it perfectly, it runs good enough to re enjoy the game itself. I wonder how much I can do that. Spend it wisely, kid. Jump in, kid. But three-dimensional games are such an like same pain to get working perfectly on these mini PC, or at least most of the time. But we're reaching into a certain like say level with these mini the AMD Ryzen mini PCs, especially when you're looking at the GPU side, that we able to run let's say games that we're normally needing a dedicated NVIDIA GPU for. With Windows Gaming we had some very good overall performance. Let's move on to simulation and see if we can push this device with some 4K emulation with some emulators. Final round. Fight. <laughs> The strongest will be chosen. Wallow in despair. I'm not afraid anymore. Battle one. Fight. <laughs> <laughs> Release it to fire our home units. 
And when you're looking at some Sega Dreamcast, absolutely amazing 4K resolution without any problem. Maybe with a minor couple of frames like dropping, but you can just see the CPU and the GPU are need to really work hard for actually rendering everything. Particularly the GPU, of course, you can see it hitting 100% every single time I'm hitting into, like say, some Dreamcast games. It's absolutely cool to see that this machine can run 4K resolution. It looks absolutely astonishing and it's just a different, new different way to play. But let's take a close look at some, let's say, GameCube gaming on 4K in combination with Wii. See how far we can push it. So let's take a close look at what we can actually do with this. So we wanted to play in 4K and that is not a problem whatsoever. So but what happens if you're going to be moving this to another level? So let's say we're going to be clicking on 12K or 8K resolution with 12 times native resolution and just to see how far we can push it. Now it struggles big time with 45, 44, like say FPS and yeah, take consideration this game is just very difficult to emulate, but this is absolutely crazy how far we can push this thing to let's say another resolution we can just go to 5k let's go back to the game itself and even 5k is just possible so that's absolutely nuts where we're going to be testing 4k on many of the emulators some cannot be pushed any further than that some can like the dolphin emulator but this is just crazy But if you wonder, can we actually play some Xbox 360 emulation on this device? Nope, that is not possible. It's kind of interesting to see that we have systems like PlayStation 2 that can be upscaled to 4K, Dreamcast, we can even go further with the Dolphin. But the unfortunate thing is Xbox 360 is way out of the league for this mini PC. We do have much more power for this, but that's something I just wanted to showcase very quickly in this video. But let's take a close look in the inside and remove some screws. So most of the time, some of those, let's say, mini PC B Link I've checked out are very compact, but had a lot of upgradability. And that is something I really wonder about this. Of course, smaller sizes is not always getting better in some cases. I've been checking out different brands and some of them have no upgradabilities or you need to replace the main storage capacity or just upgrade it. But let's remove this piece of plastic where some of them are made of metal. This is just plastic itself. And in here, this is the first thing that we're finding. So this very nice thick plastic that covers up like basically the, all of the parts beside the fan. And this is a tiny fan that actually is going to be spinning. It's not like super loud, but these things are doing a great job. Finding out the side, the cooling element. But let's remove all of this and see what is underneath and can we upgrade anything. With some companies or mini PCs, it's very easy to like to swap out, let's say, memory or let's say internal storage. But this is a slightly a little bit bit difficult always with these, let's say, B-Link. But what I find very nice is that you can see that they made a special compartment or the cooling, which you can see over here on high temperatures, is made for the NVMe's in the inside. So we do have an upgrade ability, so we can even add ourselves another NVMe to this. So that's absolutely great. We're using Crucial dual channel memory, and you can just reach in here and just replace them if you want to we're having 32 gigabytes in total so that's absolutely nice and more than enough for just casual use but also for some gaming and yeah let's take a close look at this like what kind of memory are they running on this because that is kind of interesting because i have had some problems in the past with some other b-link products and other let's say mini pcs but so far i don't know what it is this p3 plus m2 but doesn't see anything to me let's see if this Python, yeah, I think this is the main brand they're using. And I did have some problems that one of these things I might like get corrupted out of nothing. 
And for the Intel Wi-Fi, we're getting the AX200 and GW for the people who just want to know. So this particular model of B-Link is absolutely great when it comes to the overall performance. And I can tell you that when these things are getting cheaper, it's going to be even more interesting for emulation, where we have a lot of great overall performance. But also if you just want to play some indie games or some more demanding AAA games, we can actually get some good performance out of here. Thank you all for watching. Consider subscribing. Let me know what you think of B-Link and this particular series. And if you want to see anything tested, let me know in the comments. And it would be great to see you in the next video.